Right, hey, so uh, my name is Casper uh, Fabricius. Uh, I've been doing full stack web development for uh, over 15 years. And uh, I became pretty obsessed with VR about the time when the Rift DK2 uh, came out. Uh, so I went freelance for a while doing uh, web VR uh, and, and Unity development. And uh, then I met this guy with a great idea and uh, we founded a company together called uh, Kimmers. So um, let's look a little bit about, you know, what is WebVR, or should we call it WebXR, because it's really about more than just VR specifically. Um, I mean, this, uh, this definition up here is taken straight from Wikipedia, and I think it's, it's really good and, and pretty accurate. Uh, I mean, the one thing that you can kind of discuss is, is it really ex still uh, experimental? Um, because as We'll see in the next slide, it's actually fully released on quite a lot of platforms and devices. But uh, what you can say about WebVR is that in a nutshell, it's a browser API that you access via JavaScript and um, allows us to learn about what the browser and the device can do. Uh, we can get the post data uh, straight from that. And um, we can also uh, render uh, directly to uh, the VR device. Uh, it has a, a special version of the request animation frame, uh, which those familiar with web development will know is, uh, is, uh, is used to do animations. And uh, you can use that to, uh, to time your, your VR renders uh, to the frame rate of the device. Um, so as I said, we'll take a quick look at the state of web VR right now. Um, and the great thing is it actually really is fully released on uh, quite a lot of platforms. Um, and um, I mean, the big missing player here is of course uh, iOS. Um, no real surprise there. I mean, um, the good thing is that uh, thanks to Google and the web VR polar field, we can actually have like a, a simple uh, uh, cardboard mode running on iOS devices. Uh, so you can do that on an iPhone and, and put it in a cardboard. Um, but it's, it's, it's not a great experience. Uh, and well, knowing Apple, uh, they've always hated the web, so it's probably going to take a while before it gets there. I mean, they just added WebRTC in the latest version of Safari. So it's going to be a while, but I'm sure it'll get there eventually. So let's look a little bit uh, of what kind of layers makes up uh, a, a web VR application. Because a full web VR application, of course, is much more than just the actual web VR API itself. For one, you, you of course need to, to use the, the WebGL API because that's what makes you able to render hardware accelerated 3D directly in the browser. And that's what you need to be able to render at 90 frames per second for two eyes uh, straight in the browser so you give a good, good experience to, uh, to people in, uh, in, in VR. Um, the, um, the, the WebVR polyfill is, uh, is, is, is really good also outside of iOS because it kind of abstracts away uh, all of these uh, differences that, that there might be between different uh, devices. Um, so most of these uh, engines that I list, list here, um, you know, they rely on, on, the, on this uh, WebVR polyfill. And um, there are, of course, many more uh, engines out there for graphics and for games in the browser, but the ones that I've listed here is the ones that I'm pretty sure works well with WebVR today. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people like to work directly with, with 3GS for WebVR, and you can certainly do that. Uh, but for me, I personally prefer uh, something to uh, help me uh, uh, you know, uh, organize my code and, and be a bit more uh, uh, productive with that. So, so, uh, so, so I like to use a, a high abstraction layer also uh, on top of that. So. Um, what about a Unity? Uh, I mean, it would be great if we could just make some really cool VR experiences as you, in Unity, as uh, some of you are probably doing today, uh, and just get them running straight in the browser. The problem is that, I mean, WebGL is, to me, a bit of a mysterious black box when it comes to Unity's uh, WebGL rendering. Um, it may or may not work. It would probably work if you do a small thing in 2D, but if you do a big thing in 3D, it probably won't work. You can be pretty sure it won't work on a mobile phone. Um, 
and I mean, I, I reached out to Tony Parisi, uh, the, their head of VR and, 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 and AR, and you know, asked, uh, you know, can you give me an update? But he just said, well, you know, um, it's on the roadmap. Uh, but yeah, but that's what I've been trying to illustrate here. It's, it's been on roadmap for quite a while, uh, I think around two years, and no, no update. So unfortunately, I think it's going to be a while before we get nice web VR support uh, in the browser out of the box from, from Unity. But it's going to be cool when we get there. So um, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, what we can actually uh, do with, with web VR. Um, we're going to look at some code in a while, because this is a, a workshop. Um, but uh, I just want to show what we're doing with web VR at Kimmers. Sound? So what you saw there was uh, mostly built with, uh, with, with, with this stack here. And uh, you may ask, uh, well, why not React VR? Uh, well, first of all, React VR wasn't even out uh, when we started this, this project. And also, it's still just way too limited in terms of what it can do for building more advanced apps. It's, it's great for a few things. And I'd really recommend taking a look at it if you want to dive into uh, web VR and you already know React. Um, but uh, I prefer A-Frame. Um, it has a really big community. It has a large library of, uh, of, of plugins. And it's simply just ahead of the other libraries on this high abstraction level. But I, I really do like React. Um, so I'm using a, a small uh, library here to connect A-Frame and the React. And now I can actually write my VR app just as I'm used to doing with React and Redux and all the other good stuff that I, as a web developer, already know when I'm doing these uh, flat apps. Um, so a closer look at A-Frame here. Um, it's uh, basically, you know, HTML-like uh, tags and, uh, and, and that are passed and transformed into uh, 3JS code, which, of course, eventually is, goes down to being uh, uh, WebGL draw calls. And um, behind the, the kind of immediate out-of-the-box tags, uh, A-Frame has a really nice entity component structure, which some of you may know from, from Unity. So uh, you can basically take a blank entity, and then you can apply different components to it, and it will act accordingly, and you can write your own components. So that makes it a really nice and, and flexible uh, uh, tool to, uh, to work with. Uh, so it's both simple to get started. Uh, but it's also uh, really easy to, to, to extend it uh, and, and, and customize it and do advanced stuff in it. In it. So uh, let's look at some code. Um, so um, and the use case I want to show to you here today uh, is uh, from our product here. Uh, it shows a 3D model, um, and it can go into VR, go into AR. When you're not in VR or, or AI, when you're in kind of flat in, in 2D mode, um, we have a, a menu that we render with ordinary HTML. Um, and that's the one that you, that you see up here. Um, so, so yeah, so you take the mouse and you click and you open and do, 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 so on. Um, when you go into VR or, or, or AR, uh, this screenshot here is from, 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 from VR, you get you know, a very similar menu uh, with, with the same stuff in it. Um, and all that data and the state of the menu is all synced up uh, via the same uh, Redux store. Um, and that's what I want to show a little code example on how that works, because I think that's a really cool attribute of WebVR and using it with, with React and Redux that you, can, that you can sync up these things and, and really reuse a lot of stuff. Um, 
So don't worry too much if you don't understand the specific of this, if you don't know Redux. Basically, all you need to worry about is that um, uh, this, is a, this is a reducer. It, uh, it keeps track of the base state. And what the state is here in this example is basically, is the main menu open right now? And what menu items are open right now? So um, this file here, this is the entry point for the app. Um, so what it does is it gets an information about are we in VR or are we not in VR? Um, and uh, then it renders the 3D scene. That's the, uh, that's the scene tag that you have uh, uh, right here. So that kind of indicates to, to, uh, to, to A-frame that this is where to, uh, to, to render the 3D scene. Um, and then as you can see here, um, we are using our information about which, if we are in VR, then inside of the A-frame scene, we want to render the 3D menu if we're not in VR, then outside of the A-frame scene in the regular HTML, we want to render the 2D menu. So the 2D menu looks like that. And again, you don't need to worry too much about the details here. Um, what's going on over here is basically that it's getting the state information from the Redux store. So it can find out, is the main menu open and which menu items are open? And it's also getting uh, two actions to say, now I want to toggle the main menu, and I want to toggle a menu item, so open or close it. And um, that's what it's uh, using over here. You can see this is plain HTML in, in, in React style, and it's basically saying, here's a button. When I click it, you know, uh, call into to the Redux action, and that ends up with being toggling the state, so it's open, and then I render the menu items that are toggled open. Um, sorry if I'm going a bit fast, but I don't have too much time to go into detail. Um, so let's look at the 3D version here. So the point here really is that a lot of this is the same. Actually, almost all of this over here is completely the same thing because we're doing the same thing. We're connecting to the Redux data store, getting the same things in again. And then the main difference is that in A-frame, um, instead of a div element, we use something called an entity here instead. But it comes down to the same thing here. We have an entity, we have, a, we, have a, we have a menu button here, we can click it and that opens and closes the menu uh, via Redux. Um, and we render the menu items down here with the same, based on the same uh, data. Um, so um, I think that's as much detail I have time to go uh, into right now in, uh, in, in, in this talk. Um, one thing I just want to go into uh, before I finish this um, is basically why is WebVR even, even important? I mean, why does it matter? Why don't we just build all our VR stuff in, in Unity and, 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 and Unreal? Um, well, I think it matters for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, um, it's not always very easy to get people to download and install your app. That can be a huge barrier, especially if you're trying to maybe sell people something. If, if you're doing a game, a really cool experience, you know, you can do it. But if you just want to show uh, a shoe that you're trying to sell um, and, you know, tell them, oh, you have to download an app before you can see the shoe in VR, you know, that just becomes a huge barrier to, to actually getting people to then convert into a buyer. The other real cool thing is that there are about you know, 10 times as many web developers as there's game developers out there. So it's just a huge amount of developers that are able to get into VR development uh, using this uh, rather uh, than, uh, than, than, than having to learn uh, uh, something like Unity uh, all the way from scratch. I did that uh, as a web developer and uh, you know, it, was, it, it wasn't easy. It's a, it's a completely different world. Um, so this is a really good entry point for uh, many web developers to get into VR. So um, that's all I had uh, time to, for, to say today. Uh, really feel free to reach out to me on uh, Twitter, send me a mail. There's a couple of uh, links uh, over here where you can learn a bit more. I've written some articles about web VR and, and, and A-Frame. If you want to uh, try our product, a few examples here uh, that we have uh, links for. And um, that's it for me. Thank you.